Hello children, how are you all doing? I hope all these video sessions are helping you with the academics. So I'm here with another new chapter from biology, the fundamental unit of life. So in this chapter, you will, learn, you will recall many things that you have learned in the earlier classes. So what is the fundamental unit of life? Cell. Why is cell called as a fundamental unit of life? Because it helps in performing many specific functions in, a, in a, any living organism. Therefore, it is called as fundamental organizational unit. It was first discovered by a scientist, Robert Hooke, in the year 1665 with the help of a self-designed microscope. So not much of the complex structure of the cell was studied with this microscope. Only after the invention of electron microscope in 1940, it was studied better with the complex structure of the cell. Based on the number of cells, living organisms are divided into two types, unicellular and multicellular. From the name, we understand that single-celled organisms are called as unicellular and examples are amoeba, paramecium. And in multicellular, many cells group together to form tissues and many tissues form, group together to form organs to perform specific functions. So they are called as multicellular organisms. Example would be fungi, plants, animals. So here you see many cells in human body. From this picture you can see red blood corpuscles, columnar epithelial cells, smooth muscle cells, bone cells and the reproductive cells and the nerve cell which is the longest cell in the body. So what do we understand from this picture? Cells, all the cells are not of the same size and structure. They are different. So what is cell made up of? Cell is mainly divided into three parts. The plasma membrane, the outermost layer, which is also called as cell membrane, the nucleus and the cytoplasm. So the plant cells have an additional layer called as cell wall. So the cell wall will be the outermost layer for any plant cell. So we will take up each of them and study in detail plasma membrane. So here on the right hand side, what you see is a snippet from the textbook. On the left hand side, it is the same animal cell. For clarity purpose, I have taken this picture. So which is the outermost layer that we see here is plasma membrane. And then you see a nucleus and the cytoplasm, which is a fluid part. Cytoplasm, that is a fluid part of the cell. The outermost layer is a cell membrane. And then you see cell organelles, mitochondria, Golgi, lysosome, ribosome. ER, endoplasmic reticulum and nucleus. So we will just check with plant cell how it is. Plant cell again it has similar structure but with an additional layer that is cell wall. And you also see that the cell wall is rigid because of the presence of cellulose. And here the difference is the vacuole is quite big when compared to the animal cells. And we also see nucleus and other cell organelles. Cell organelles in the fluid part called as cytoplasm. So we will take up the first one. Plasma membrane is also called as cell membrane. It is the outermost layer of the cell. And it is also called as selectively permeable membrane. Why is it called as a selectively permeable membrane? Because it does not allow all the substances to pass through it. So the exit and the entry of any material should be allowed by this membrane. Therefore, it is called as selectively permeable and it helps in a very important process called as diffusion and osmosis. What is diffusion? Diffusion is, the, is nothing but the spontaneous movement of substance from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. That is, it can be substances can be gas or water 
or any solid materials that wants to pass through this membrane that is from from the cell to the outer environment or from the outer envi environment to the cell or between the cells or within the cells we will see osmosis in detail so you have understood what is diffusion osmosis is a special case of diffusion which is nothing but the movement of water molecules from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration no other solid materials it is only the movement of water molecules so that process is called as osmosis when we water any plant we see that there is a spontaneous absorption of water from from the roots so this is also a diffusion process So here in this slide we see that osmosis is a special diffusion where we will consider one example plant cell is plant cell which is immersed in a solution a solution containing sugar water we call sugar water as solution sugar is a solute and water is a solvent so therefore plant cell and sugar water what happens the plant cell can either swell or there will be no change in the cell or the cell can shrink based on the number of water molecules in the sugar water so we have three types of solutions hypertonic isotonic and hypertonic based on the concentration of the water molecules in the solution so if the water molecules are higher in the solution outside the cell they are called as hypotonic hypo is less that is less thick it is the water is very diluted the solution is diluted solution outside the cell so the water molecules are more in any diluted solution so what happens the water molecules move or there will be a movement of water molecules from the solution to the cell therefore the cell swells in an ice in an isotonic solution the water molecules are equal when compared to the cell and the outer environment therefore there will be no movement of water molecules in hypertonic the cell contains more water molecules than the outer environment that is the solution is thick that is water molecules are less in the solution therefore the water molecules move from the cell to the outer environment making the cell shrink so here on the right hand side we see an two activities and the first activity we can see that place a deshelled egg in pure water it is not a solution it is a pure water deshelled egg is nothing but the egg whose shell is being removed outermost shell is removed and egg is also a cell this is the largest cell in the world we call egg as a largest cell in the world and if you immerse egg in a pure water what happens egg swells so therefore the solution outside is hypotonic because it's a pure water it's a diluted one so more water molecules are there in the the solution outside this egg therefore the water molecules move from the outer solution to the inside the egg therefore the egg swells the second activity is place a deshelled egg in salt solution what happens when the same egg which is being deshelled is placed in a salt solution the egg shrinks that is because the salt solution has got less water molecule therefore it is hypertonic and we can see that the water molecules moving from the egg to the solution therefore the cell shrinks therefore we can summarize the characteristics of plasma membrane as they permit the exit and entry to the molecules is through this membrane therefore it is called as selectively permeable membrane and we also see that not only the exchange of water solid even the exchange of gases is possible through this membrane and it is flexible because of the presence of lipids and proteins make it flexible and in particularly in unicellular organism amoeba this flexibility helps them to take in the food endocytosis endocytosis is nothing but how the amoeba engulf engulf the food with the help of the finger like they throw finger like structure the outer layer is thrown like a finger like structure called as pseudopodia and they take in the food
Next, we go to the cell wall, which is present only in plant cells. In plant cells, this is the outermost rigid covering because of the presence of cellulose. Here also, we see the shrinkage and contraction of cells due to osmosis. And it is when it is happening in a plant cell, it is called as plasmolysis. Before we go to the nucleus, nucleus part of the cell, we need to understand what is prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So let's recall what is it. Prokaryote is nothing but undefined nucleus. Karyote is nothing but a nucleus. Prokaryote is, it's a primitive nucleus, not very well defined nucleus. It doesn't have a nuclear membrane. It is, it is dispersed in the cytoplasm itself like a, like the one which you see on the right hand side. And we call such a nucleus as nucleoid. Here on the left hand side you can see that the uh, nucleus contains chromatin network, thread like, woolen like structure, chromatin network which carries DNA and a genetic information. At the time of cell division they pair up as chromosomes, right? So here in a prokaryotic cell you can see that the nucleus doesn't have a nuclear membrane. They are, the chromatin network is exposed into the cytoplasm directly. And this is a eukaryotic cell, which has a double layered nuclear membrane. And you can also see the chromatin network, which contains, which is composed of DNA and protein. DNA is nothing but deoxy ribose nucleic acid. It is a chemical which contains genetic information in the form of genes. So they, the main function of the nucleus is cell division, which helps in cellular, re, when we say cellular reproduction, it is cell division. The cell divides into two. At the time of cell division, these chromatin network, they pair up and they are called as chromosomes. So you can see the outer layer called as nuclear envelope. And you also see nuclear pores and ribosomes is from the endoplasmic reticulum. They are always associated with a, the rough endoplasmic reticulum is always associated with a nucleus. And such a nucleus will have nucleus, this chromatin network here it is called as nucleolus. Here we just call it as a nucleoid in a prokaryotic cell. In a eukaryotic cell, the nucleus is very well defined with a nuclear membrane. So the difference between a prokaryotic and eukaryotic is tabulated here. We can go through this. We will next move to the cytoplasm, which is a fluid contained inside the plasma membrane. It has cell organelles. Cell organelles are those which are organelles, organs which has a specific function. We will take up each one of them. The first one is endoplasmic reticulum. So we, sim we simply call it as ER. There are two types, the rough and the smooth. On the right hand side, you see the picture. The rough endoplasmic has got deposits of ribosomes. So these small granular structure are ribosomes which help in protein synthesis. And ER is a tubular kind of a structure or we call them as vesicles also. They help in protein synthesis because the rough ER helps in protein synthesis because it has ribosome deposition. The smooth ER helps in the manufacture of lipids, the fat molecules. So these protein, protein synthesis when we say this protein helps in the formation of cell membrane also. A part of the protein is will help in the formation of cell membrane. The remaining helps in the formation of enzymes which is used up by the lysosomes. So the main function of endoplasmic reticulum would be protein synthesis and transport of materials across the cytoplasm. And then here is Golgi apparatus. You see these vesicles, vesicles incoming and then the vesicles which are newly formed and getting detached from the Golgi apparatus. So what is the main function of the Golgi apparatus is storage storage and if in very few cases they modify the content and they help in packaging the products in vesicles 
they also help in the formation of lysosomes. So the structure of a Golgi apparatus is vesicle, that is a membrane bound vesicles called as cisterns and they are almost parallel to each other. They stack up one above the other and they are almost parallel. Here you see the lysosomes. Lysosomes contain powerful digestive enzymes. Here you see hydrolytic enzyme mixture which is present in the lysosome. The main function of the lysosome is to clean up the cells. How do they clean up? They digest any foreign material uh, infect if it is infective or if the cell is becoming old and worn out. It digests the cell or it digests the foreign material which is infective. For example, if a virus enters a cell, the lysosomes digest that virus and keeps the cell safe. And, so, and once the cell is old or worn out, it digests its own cell because it is damaged or it is old. Therefore, it is called as suicide bag. So these enzymes, these enzymes are prepared by the ribosomes here. We have seen that here, RER. This is about lysosomes. Why is it called as a suicide bag is a very important question because the enzymes which are manufactured in lysosomes, they contain the enzymes which are manufactured by RER to digest its own cell when it is damaged or worn out. And next comes the mitochondria. We call it as a powerhouse of the cell. Why is it called as a powerhouse? Because it has it provides energy in the form of ATP molecules which is adenosine triphosphate chemical. Because it provides energy to the cell, we call it as a powerhouse and it, we can also see that it has DNA material, a thread-like structure here and ribosomes. It has its own DNA and ribosome and it is a double layered organelle. The outer layer is porous and the inner layer is thrown into folds called as cristae to increase the surface area. So therefore, the energy within the cell is from the mitochondria. And it also helps in the cellular respiration. Here comes the plastids. Plastids are present only in the plant cell. There are two types, chromoplast and leucoplast. Chromo is nothing but color. So the, so the one which is colored other than green will either be in orange or any other color. They help in They help in Okay, here you see chromoplast, leucoplast and chloroplast. The colored pigments are called as the colored plastids are called as chromoplast. It is either colored in orange color or green color. The green colored ones are called as chloroplast. You can see that they have grana and stroma. And the other, other chromoplasts which are not in green color, they are, not, they are not helpful for photosynthesis. The one which is colorless helps in storage of starch, oils and proteins. So the, here you see chloroplast. We can see that the grana which is stacked one above the other and the stroma is a fluid part. These chloroplasts are green in color because of the chlorophyll pigment and they help in photosynthesis. Even they have their own DNA and ribosomes just like mitochondria. So vacuoles, vacuoles are very big in plant cells. 
when compared to animal cells, the size of the vacuole is big. So the main function of the vacuole is storage. They are the storage sacs for solid or liquid contents. They store amino acids, which is nothing but the protein molecule, sugars, organic acids, and some other proteins. In unicellular organisms, they help in eliminating the water from the cell. It can be a waste. Therefore, we come to the end of the chapter. Why is cell called as a fundamental structural and functional unit of life? So now we know that because it helps in performing many functions like respiration, nutrition, waste disposal or forming new proteins. They are all the life processes. So they form the basic structural and fundamental unit. Children, I'll be sending you the questions through app. So you'll find all the answers in the slides. All the slides are actually self-explanatory. So find the answers and complete, complete your classwork as well as the assignment questions. Thank you, children. Meet you in our next session.